Hey everyone, this is Cholera and I am with Rise, and we're casting Fantasy vs. Quanro, set 2 of the MSL Survivor Tournament Group 10, and uh, hopefully this game, well actually last game was of interesting quality, I actually will say Type B was, uh, it played very well, although the same unfortunately cannot be said of, uh, of Worst God there, who just uh, I think blew a big lead, but Type E really had good micro. What I was going to say, well, this game should be quite high quality. We have here Fantasy, uh, well known for his Fantasy mech build against Zerg that he owned GG play with in the OSL group uh, f round of four last OSL, and uh, he's facing Quanro, a hyper-aggressive Zerg player. Reminds me a little bit of the uh, old-school Yellow, NC Yellow, of course, the original Yellow, who uh, likes to play low econ also, and uh, a little bit like Oversky also. He doesn't play necessarily standard Zerg play, also well-known for his uh, Zergling control. Um, he is 56, no, 50% against Terran, whereas uh, Fantasy is about 53% against Zerg, so pretty evenly lined up, although I gotta say, with recent performances, Fantasy is done a lot better than Quanro, so I'm going to favor Qu Fantasy a bit in this uh, first matchup. You ever see the Futurama episode where uh, Bender is god of, like, a bunch of little people that grow on his stomach for some reason? I forget where they come from. <laughs> no, I haven't. It's kind of what Best God reminds me of, right? He, uh, he's he got this, this, uh, this following of people, and they keep asking him for stuff, but he just keeps killing them by mistake. Like, they ask for riches, so he, he drops uh, a quarter on them, and it squashes, like, half the village. And then they ask for, uh, you know, more sunshine so their crops will be, grow better. And he causes mass <laughs> fires across the land. You know, this is that's, like, kind of what Best God reminds me of. Just, like, a horrible god that will, is, is certainly not the best god, but thinks he's the best god, just like Bender. Anyway, to the match. So, uh, yeah, well, they're playing again on Byzantium 2. The uh, records of both players seem to indicate that it should be an even match here, um, both around the 50 percentile win rate against the respective races. So we'll have to see what happens, though. It's going to be interesting if we're going to see some more cheese. We've been seeing a lot of cheese lately in uh, a few of the games that we've watched and casted in the past. And uh, we'll see if we see the same builds coming from the uh, these players. Fantasy, though, I don't remember watching Fantasy Cheese much. And Quanro, uh, like you said, is just more of like a, a hyper-aggressive guy. So I expect some sort of, uh, well, he's going for an Overlord, it looks like. So I'm thinking maybe some sort of Overpool build or something where he can start putting some early pressure on Fantasy because uh, Quanro is just an aggressive guy in general, which doesn't always pay off for him, though. Sometimes he's a little too aggressive, and that has cost him the games in many games past. So we'll see if uh, these players, if uh, Quanro can, can keep it under control for once. <laughs> that is a good point there. Um, you know, Quanro this season actually has been doing terribly. He is 1-5 and five right now, which puts him uh, way, way down there in the Pro League uh, stats. I mean, that is just that is just uh, unfortunate because Quanro in general is a good player, I think. Um, he's certainly a lot better than the other company that he's keeping right now at the bottom of the ladder, like uh, your Hooks and your uh, whatever. But uh, <laughs> he, he is a, he's, a, he's a decent player. He's only 1-5, and five, though. It means he is in a definite slump. Uh, meanwhile, Fantasy is doing pretty good this season. He's 11 and 8 this season, so I would make him a big favorite. It looks like actually both players are opening with standard builds so far. Um, I expected Fantasy to go uh, mech the last time he played which against Zerg, which was against Jadong, uh, but instead he went Medic Marines and got owned. Uh, but, you know, we'll see if he decides to go for Medic Marines or if he... Um, goes for Mac. Of course, by no means do I do I say Quanro is uh, anything like Jadong. Jadong, of course, is the best Zerg right now, and that cannot be said for Quanro. Um, but anyway, it looks like he might be going for a three-hatch build here, and we're seeing a fast command center here from uh, from Fantasy, so he knows the build. He's got lucky enough to get a scout with his first SCV, so he doesn't even have to build a Marine before going command center, so this is going to be a heavy macro game from both players, it seems. Third hatch going up here from the Zerg player, and, uh, you know, we're going to see probably... Um well, I'm going to guess it's going to be Medic Marine because uh, I haven't seen the refinery go down. And, uh, you know, obviously the timing would be very different for a fast factory build. So I think it's just going to be Medic Marine here for Fantasy. Yeah, it could be. Uh, although he's got his barracks in that position that I've seen uh, a lot of Tyrant players do and, and throw a uh, factory down next to it to wall off that ramp. Not saying he's going to do that, but for a second I thought he might have. Anyway, it looks like uh, that scout is paying off for him for sure. I mean, the fact uh, is that Quanro right now is just going mass drone. So it looks like he's going to go very uh, economy heavy. Finally popping out some links there. All right, as soon as I say that, he starts popping out some links, so never mind. And it uh, looks like he's going to start putting a little bit of pressure. 
catch. Strong fantasy anyway. And uh, fantasy might actually put a, uh, a bunker down in front of his expansion, which I got to say is advisable. I've seen a lot of games where pro, pro players just assume that they can out-micro the other player or deal with it or whatever, and they don't put any bunker down, and then they just get overrun. Academy going down, so we are going to see Medic Marine build from fantasy and not a mech build. And uh, that third hatch about to complete, but I don't see any sort of tech uh, coming from Quanro quite yet. So uh, I wonder if he'll be going some sort of... I don't know, Hydra build or, or something ridiculous, but it's probably still a little early to call that out. Yeah, I mean, most likely he's just going to go get the uh, lair. Or, or he actually, most likely he's actually gone speed first, is why you don't see any tech, rather. Uh, he probably spent his first 100 gas on speed for his lings, and I can see why. It's because he's building a ton of lings, but uh, we're going to see Fantasy scouting this. Fantasy has scouted the fact that Quanro, like like we were saying, is very aggressive. He's He doesn't have the patience to wait for a lair. He's like, I need to go right now, which means I need Zerglings. <laughs> and so he's gone speedlings. Um, but the unfortunate fact is Fantasy has scouted the fact that he's built at least uh, a dozen and a half Zerglings. Um, and he's probably going to switch tech now and actually get a lair, uh, even though he is a one impatient dude, because uh, he's got to know that he can't run past that bunker and those Marines, and especially if uh, Fantasy is vigilant for it. So that's going to slow Quanro down a little bit, and uh, Fantasy's economy, meanwhile, is very strong because of his build. So, uh, you know, he's got a lot of lings, but not too much he can do with them. And here's Fantasy continuing to strengthen this wall by putting a Supply Depot block there also. So, uh, you know, we'll see how good Quanro is with his Mulisk, which are going to be slightly late because of how many lings he produced. Yeah, and he's already, at, he's got his eBay going up, and Quanro trying to do some sort of harassment with those links, which is typical and expected at the same time from Quanro, but now the medic is out, so it's going to be very difficult for him to do too much damage to these SCVs that'll just get healed by the uh, medic, so he's going to have a real tough time doing any damage, and again with that bunker there, that's going to limit his options for harassment in general. There is the Spire, though, so we are going to see those three hash mutas as you alluded to, and uh, we'll have to see if he's able to pull anything off with that. The eBay will be coming up very shortly and uh, we'll probably start seeing some sort of uh, upgrades from the medic marines I'm gonna guess that he's gonna go for uh, plus ones versus the muta as they tend to be more favored by Terran players against the muta build and it looks like he's gonna push out and actually put some pressure on Quanro which I think is a good idea because Quanro uh, doesn't have any defense at his main base so he's gonna have to get something up and he's got uh, another two barracks going up, so he's going to be able to put a lot of pressure on him very soon, and also going to put up some turrets early. He's got scan down at probably both command centers, only seeing it at the main there, so I'm sure he knows what's going on at this point. And so uh, Quadro actually going to have um, a little bit of defense to do here, and, and I think a little bit of pressure, but Quadro going for a run by. He's going to be able to get inside the base, and uh, a couple of nice. Marines trying to block the ramp, not able to do it, but they're stim, so they're able to run away and able to delay long enough for the rest of the Marines to get to him. So the Marines are actually going to complete this and uh, clean this up before Quanro can do much damage if any at all except for the uh, couple of units that he managed to kill and so I think fantasy if he pays attention will be able to clean this up but it, it seems like he's not paying uh, that much attention and now that bunker's empty so those lings are able to escape and fantasy uh, I don't know if it was a little lapse in judgment or he was just trying to push out uh, with without any defense normally you make two fire bats to block the ramp after that but not doing anything like that against Quanro which seems uh, silly to me because he should have expected that from a player like Quanro, but now he's paying for it a little bit. Now he's got to put up some extra turrets because he did lose a few Marines, and the Muta are heading his way to do some harassment. Yeah, I mean, that was an interesting run around there by Quanro. He actually didn't pick off that much, though. But, um, you know, he's he's doing all right himself. Uh, yeah, um, you know, right now we're seeing him putting up a base. And actually, Ryze, why don't you commentate for a while? I got a phone call I have to pick up right now, so I'll, I'll let you know I'm back. <laughs> Can do. We got the Muta coming in now, and he's going to find a couple of Marines hanging out outside the barracks, and only one turret, so Quanro is going to try to pick all of that apart, not losing one Muta yet, but he does have a couple of damage one. Fantasy completely out of position here. He's able to take down one, two Muta. Quanro really slow and pushing back here. More... More Marines coming out at the perfect time to get some more shots on those Muta as they go back. Quanro, not with the best Muta Micro there. Generally, when you have your Muta Micro, you want to continue to keep them moving so they stay at 
full speed, and then from there you just go j bounce in and out and in and out and do your, your little harassments, picking off unit by unit by unit, but instead, um, he, he stops him over the barracks, and, uh, you know, Fantasy's just able to pick off a ton at a time, but Quanro coming with in with even more Muta, and now uh, with a lot of Marines to, to come back and, and do some more damage and, and to push him off, those, Marine, those uh, Muta are going to be forced back, and... Uh, Actually, not doing too much damage. Managed to take out a couple of turrets, a couple of uh, marines, but really not that much damage done by that harassment as of yet anyway. He's still got some more time. He hasn't done any economic damage though, and uh, as we saw earlier, Fantasy's economy was strong to begin with, so I think he kind of needed to do some. He's got some units up, uh, some sunkets up now at the front to defend, and man, he's starting to see a lot of marines from Fantasy at this point, and so uh, Quanro going to have a little bit of trouble doing any more damage, especially with those extra turrets up, and oh, that expansion is going to get scouted by Fantasy, so Fantasy now knows the new expansion is up, and I'm sure he's going to send out that Medic Marine Force over there, he's going to see the Hydras and know about the Lurker Tech coming as well. <coughs> Excuse me. So now he's going for the double engineering, but he's probably going to start getting more upgrades. And oh man, Quanra going after all those turrets, taking out all of them actually, doing a pretty good job there. But again, not doing any economical damage to uh, the economy of Fantasy. And Fantasy obviously just going to rebuild those turrets and start pushing into that expansion as expected. And uh, Quanra going to be in a bit of trouble if he doesn't have lurkers out very shortly. And try to oh no, and Muta just running in, a moving right into a group of Marines that stop moving and uh Quanru losing at least three more muta maybe even more and uh fantasy definitely in, in a bit of a lead here at this point and now oh man Quanru doesn't have lurker tech yet he's about to get an oh i don't think he's gonna have the upgrade in time no he doesn't he just gets the upgrade now he was gonna block the rip but he didn't get it in time those suckers are not gonna be morphed he's gonna be able to take them out before they do any damage the muta coming in to try to distract but they're not Going to be strong enough to do anything on their own, only being two of them. That second sucking down, the Muta down, two lurkers that he's going to be able to focus fire on. But he's actually just able to take out the uh, hatchery by itself anyway, which is going to do even more damage to uh, Quanro's expansion. All that money lost. He focuses on, oh, the first lurker goes down, the second lurker goes down without even getting a shot off. Now the lings are going down, and now the hatchery going to go down, and Quanro knows he's in a lot of trouble. He lost way too many units to 12 freaking marines, man. He lost a group of lings he lost uh, a bunch of hydra i'm sorry well yeah he lost hydra he lost lurker he lost muta he lost that base and that is going to be a lot of trouble for Quano to deal with at this point Quano is still only with the same defenses there's still the same amount of bases queen's nest going down maybe he's starting to think of oh wait jadog was able to use queens against mass medic marines maybe i can but he's forgetting one key thing right here he is not jadog no he's not and he's not going to be able to pull something like that off uh not with his ability his current ability anyway if he did it'd have to be on his best day and clearly this is not his best day considering the mistakes that he was just making he is way off we got plus one weapons now for fantasy and fantasy going to be able to do a lot of damage at this point he's probably upgrading plus two plus one armor and uh so he's going to be able to deal with this and here we see hive tech going down we're probably going to see cracklings being upgraded as well as some uh defiler mound action but oh quadro actually going in for the counter but no he's just going to get pincered instead and with that bunk down those lurkers are going to be absolutely useless tanks in the field quanro i think it's time for him to gg at this point already i don't think there's much that he can do new expansion going down he has to cancel it he's forced to no choice about that lurkers out on the field hold position lurkers on top of that they're not even attacking and uh no finally they start attacking but he, they are scouted by the uh, science vessel it looked like they weren't attacking anyway they might have been and so he's going to have a lot of trouble dealing with this. And oh, uh, good micro by Fantasy to get those lurkers up on the ledge. And those lurkers are going to go down without much damage done to those marine forces. Not even really slowing Fantasy down very much. And now Fantasy is knocking on the front door of Quanro. Quanro moving in a little prematurely, in, in my opinion, especially with that second group of medic marines coming to reinforce. Those lurkers are going to go down. One, two, the links go down. And GG from Quanro. So, uh, Fantasy pulling out the win here with very solid play. Quanro showing that he still has an itchy trigger finger, not able to do the amount of damage that he wanted to do, which was a lot, I'm sure, over-aggressive again. And so, uh, Quanro moving on to the loser's match, while Fantasy is moving on to the winner's match to face off against Type B. Both should be exciting matches, and so we'll see you there. And by then, Collar will certainly be back from this important phone call. <laughs> see you guys then. Bye.